Odds are, as your Home Assistant installation grows and you add new entities, you're constantly tweaking and rearranging your Home Assistant dashboards. You might end up with multiple views of a given dashboard, or you might even end up with multiple dashboards, even creating specialty dashboards for things like mobile devices or specific layouts for things like a tablet kiosk. So today, I'm not gonna cover how to actually create dashboards, but give you a few tips and tricks for how you might manage and organize multiple dashboards in your Home Assistant environment. Then I'm gonna cover the standard Home Assistant conditional card that allows you to dynamically change what is shown on a dashboard page based on the state of another entity. So hang around. Hi, and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Now, if you've used Home Assistant for any time at all, you've probably already spent a significant amount of time designing and redesigning and updating your dashboards, whether it be because you've added new entities, new cards that become available, or maybe you've even changed your layout from something like all of your lights on one view and all of your sensors on another view to be rearranged by room, where maybe you've got all of your kitchen entities on one view and all of your living room entities on another view. Today I'll cover some quick tips and tricks for how you might manage multiple dashboards and multiple views within Home Assistant. Then we'll take a look at a special card in Home Assistant called the Conditional Card that allows you to dynamically update the content on a view of a dashboard. So let's get started by talking a little bit about terminology as it relates to dashboards for those of you that might be brand new to Home Assistant. Now you can have one or more dashboards and these dashboards can optionally be shown along this vertical sidebar. So here you can see I've got two completely different dashboards that are available in this sidebar. Now each dashboard is made up of one or more views which you see across the top. And you can have multiple views that group things in any way, shape, or form that you want. But each view is made up of one or more cards. Now some cards are meant to organize other cards. So for example, this little blue highlighted box you see, each of those is a vertical stack card. Those are meant to hold other cards in a vertical column. Then within that, you might have other cards such as a horizontal stack meant to hold other cards in a horizontal row or something like a grid card. Then those cards will hold individual types of cards of things like graph cards or entity or entities cards or climate cards. But again, this isn't really about how to build a dashboard manage our dashboards, we come over here to our settings and we go to dashboards. Here you will see all of your defined dashboards and can actually add a new dashboard if you like. Now you have an option to make this dashboard available to only those with administrative rights within Home Assistant and you have an option whether to show or not show this dashboard in the sidebar. As you can see I've got five different dashboards defined, only two of them are shown in the sidebar. I have one here that's specifically meant for mobile devices or phones. And the nice thing is you can set any of these dashboards as the default on the device you're currently using. So on our cell phones, I've set the mobile dashboard as the default for that device. And I've also created a dashboard here that I call archives. Notice this is not shown in the sidebar. It's not the default dashboard for any device. What I do here is I actually use this to store views that I occasionally want into my main dashboards. So for example, this is my Halloween view that I use to control my animatronic props. I don't need it taking up space on my dashboard year round, but come October, I will move this out of the archives back to a live dashboard. Then come November, I'll put it back into the archives again. How do I go about doing that? Well, the best way is always to take a look at an example. So I happen to have a stage view on one of my dashboards and I use this to create temporary dashboards for some of my YouTube videos. In this case, it is a dashboard that I used for my bed sensor and AC automation video. Now that that's published, I really don't need it taking up space on one of my main dashboards. And I could just delete these cards, but I might wanna hang on to them in case a question comes up in the comments later or I decide to integrate some portion of this into one of my main dashboards. So to archive these, first I need to create a place to hold them. So I'm gonna go back over to my dashboards. I'm going to go to my archive. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to add a new view. And I'll just call this view AC Automation. Okay, now I've got a place to move those. So I'll go back over here to my stage view 
I'm going to edit my dashboard, and now I've got this card. If I come down here to the three dots, I've got an option to move this to a different view. Now, notice I can duplicate it, or I can copy, or I can cut and go over and paste it. But in my case, the easiest thing to do is move to view. It's going to ask me which dashboard. I want to move it to my archives, over to my AC automation, and simply move it. Now, if I go back over and look at my automation dashboard, you'll see that that entire vertical stack card has been moved. So what if I just want to move one of these cards and not the entire vertical stack? Well, this is a little bit of a change from the way Lovelace used to be, but I come here to edit the vertical stack card. I find the particular card I want to move. Let's say in this case, I want to move this climate card. I can come in here and I can choose to copy or cut. I'm just going to choose copy, but it works the same way. Now I've got that copied into my clipboard. So now I can go back over to my archive dashboard, to my automation view. I edit that and then I say add a card. You'll see the first option here is to paste from clipboard. So if I had cut that from my other one and I could have pasted it here, it would have moved just that single card. But that's not what I want to do. I want to keep my entire vertical stack. You might also be asking, is there a way to move an entire view from one dashboard to the other? Currently, the only way to do that is through editing of the YAML. I expect at some point in time, we're going to see an option here to copy, cut, paste, or move a view from one dashboard to the other. But right now, the only way to do that is to go into the raw configuration editor and find the view that you want to move and cut and copy the entire section of YAML out of the raw configuration editor. That's prone to a lot of error, especially when it comes to proper indentation and all that. But that is a way that you can move an entire view from one dashboard to another. But currently through the UI as of right now, the only way to do that is one card at a time. It does help if you have things organized into vertical and horizontal stacks. It does make it easier to move multiple cards at one time. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this one over again. I'm just going to repeat that by I'm going to move it to a different view, move it back to my archives, over to my AC automation, and move it. Now I've got a nice blank slate here. If I go back over to my archives one last time, open that up, and now you can see I've really duplicated that view from my live dashboard over to my archives. And the good news is that now leaves me a nice blank slate that I can use to talk about the next part of this video, which are the use of conditional cards. As an example, I'm going to start out with a pretty simple and really kind of silly view in a dashboard here, but it shows you how the conditional cards works. I'm going to create a list that shows me all the current active Roku players in the house. And to do that, I've just started out by creating an additional vertical, vertical stack configuration card. So let's go in here and edit that. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to add a new card and I'm going to come down here and I want to find a conditional card because I only want this to display based on a condition. So I pull that up there. First thing it's going to do is going to ask for the conditions. What entity do I want to use? Well, in my case, I'm going to use one of my Roku media players. I'm choosing the Roku that's in the family room and now it wants to know what the state is. I want to say, in my case, I want to say when the state is not equal to standby. So anytime the state of this Roku is not in standby, I define inside of this conditional card will display. So what I actually want to display in here, in my case, I'm just going to display a simple media control player. And again, I need to select the actual entity. In this case, I actually want it to be the same entity, which happens to be the Roku in the family room. Anytime that state is not equal to standby, then this card is going to display. I'm going to go ahead and quickly create those same steps for a couple of other Rokus. Now do note that while I'm using the same entity for the condition and for the card, that is not required at all. You can use any entity that you want for your condition and use a completely different type of entity in your card. You're also not limited to only showing one card. You can put multiple cards to be displayed, and I'll show that in an example here in a minute. The only other limitation as of right now is the condition state has to be equal to or not equal to. It can't be something like greater to or less than. Okay, so what I've done at this point is I've added three conditional cards 
for th three different Roku players. And it's based on the state not being equal to standby. So I go ahead and click save on this. You're going to see that all three of them are shown, but that's because I'm in edit mode. Now, when I say that I'm done, notice that two of those disappeared because right now, two of those three Rokus are in standby mode and only one is currently active. Now let's see what happens when one of those gets turned on. As you'll notice now all of a sudden the Roku in the office is currently active. And now all of a sudden the Roku in the basement is active. One of these Rokus then gets shut off, for example, in the office. Notice it disappears from the list, as does the one in the basement as I turn it off. You can see how those conditional cards are hiding or displaying other cards based on the state of an entity. Now again, this is a pretty simplistic example, and there are other ways to do this. For example, if you just want a list of entities that all have a state like on, say, show me all the lights in the house that are on, you could also use something like an entity filter card. Although currently the entity filter card all has to be done via YAML. It's not available to set up through the UI. But also note that using the conditional card, you can also nest things inside of that including other conditional cards, and can do some pretty complex things. Let me give you another quick example. So how am I using conditional cards to do what I showed in the intro of this video, and that is change the controls that are displayed on a single view of a dashboard? Well, it's actually by using multiple conditional cards in combination with each other. In my particular case for my matrix display, I have four switches and some other information over here on the left-hand side of my dashboard that's always shown. But the mode of the matrix is controlled by these four switches. And since these are switches, they have an off on state and we can use that state to decide which conditional cards to show and which ones to hide. So on the right hand side of my dashboard, I'm just starting out with a vertical stack card. That's going to keep all of my other controls organized into a column. But then I define a conditional card. The first one is based on the state of that clock switch. When the clock switch is on, everything inside of this conditional card is going to show when the clock is off, everything will be hidden. Inside of that, I'm creating yet another vertical stack card, again, just to keep things organized in columns, and then any specific cards for the clock and controls that I wanna show when the clock is active. Then I simply repeat that, creating a conditional card for each of the other switches, countdown, scoreboard, and text, which is not shown here. When the clock switch is active and the other switches are not, only the controls for the clock inside of that green conditional card are going to show. When the mode is switched to countdown, then the clock controls will be hidden and the countdown controls will be shown. And the same way with scoreboard. Now in my case, these switches are mutually exclusive. Only one can be turned on at a time. But if it was possible to turn on more than one switch at a time, say I had both clock and text turned on, then both those conditional cards would be shown over on the right hand side. So again, you can see that back here on the dashboard. With my clock being active, everything you're seeing on the right-hand column here is within a conditional card. When I switch over to countdown, now the conditional card for clock is hidden and the conditional card for countdown is shown. And the same way for each of these other options. I do know it is possible that you can actually nest these together. So let's just say as a crazy example, I only wanted this countdown pause color to show when the clock was in stop pause state. I can include this inside of a conditional card based on the state of this switch. So I can actually nest conditional cards inside of other conditional cards and be able to control exactly what is shown on the dashboard based on the state of other entities. And just a reminder, the conditional card is part of Core Home Assistant. You don't need to add anything through the Home Assistant Community Store. You don't need to do any YAML configuration. It's there for you now. And it can be a very powerful card especially when you combine it with things like subviews, which I covered in another video. Using that and maybe some of the techniques I showed here in terms of organizing your dashboards will allow you to create very user-friendly and dynamic dashboards in your own Home Assistant installation. If you saw any of this video you liked, do me a big favor and hit that thumbs up button. That lets me know I'm on the right track with these videos. Click that subscribe button if you'd like to see more of my content and ding that little bell icon if you want to be notified when I release new videos. And as always, I'd like to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.